Good morning. Our lecture for today would be pulmonary diseases in pregnancy. Outline would be normal physiologic changes in pregnancy, the different pulmonary disorders, and management and treatment. So, physiologic changes would be your vital capacity and your inspiratory capacity increased by approximately 20% by late pregnancy. Your expiratory reserve volume decreases from 1,300 ml to approximately 1,100 ml. Your tidal volume increases approximately 40% as a result of your respiratory stimulation by progesterone. So your minute ventilation increases as much as 30 to 40% due to increased tidal volume. As a result, arterial oxygen increases from 100 to 105 millimeter mercury. Increasing metabolic demands in pregnancy cause a 30% rise in carbon dioxide production, but because of its concomitantly increased diffusion capacity and hyperventilation, arterial carbon dioxide decreases from 40 to 32 millimeter mercury. Your residual volume decreases approximately 20% from 1,500 milliliters to approximately 1,200 milliliters. Chest wall compliance is reduced by a third by the expanding uterus and increased intra-abdominal pressure. This causes a 10 to 25% decrease in functional residual capacity, the sum of expiratory reserve and residual volume. So in summary, this table shows your physiologic changes of pregnancy in your pulmonary system. Okay. So except for residual volume and lung capacities derived therefrom, these um, parameters can be measured using direct spirometric techniques. So the sum of changes would lead to increased ventilation overall in pregnancy. So your breathing is deeper but not more frequent because the goal would be a more basal oxygen consumption. As a result, in pregnancy, there's increased plasma pH and decrease in arterial oxygen, carbon dioxide, and bicarbonate. So, this in pregnancy could occur because there would be shortness of breath at rest during pregnancy. They would often complain of that. And the patient is very aware that she or he needs to breathe. Mechanism may be uh, attributed to alveolar hyperventilation in response to a decreased carbon dioxide and consequences of your anatomical changes in the thorax which accompanies normal pregnancy. These are the usual diseases in pregnancy and we will discuss them one by one. So pneumonia, this is inflammation affecting the lung parenchyma distal to the larger airways. It involves your respiratory bronchioles and alveolar units. Your bronchial pneumonia is patchy with diffuse areas of involvement and no consolidation and is a less severe form of pneumonitis. So of course, if you have any infection, you think of preterm labor secondary to a poorly tolerated fetal hypoxemia and acidosis. So it's a droplet 
um, transmission. Two-thirds would be caused by strep pneumo, mycoplasma pneumoniae, and influenza A. And a third may be pneumococcal. Symptoms of pneumonia would be cough, fever, dyspnea, respiratory symptoms, and malaise. Of course, we diagnose with chest x-ray, sputum gram stain, your antigens specific for a certain bacteria. Of course, we need to hospitalize and antibiotics of choice would be your erythromycin for your pneumococci and mycoplasma and your cephalosporins for your staph and haemophilus pneumonia. So for persistent fever, you repeat chest x-ray and do a thoracentesis or thoracostomy tube drainage. And for immunocompromised patients, pneumococcal vaccine is recommended. So complications that pregnant patient may have the need for tracheal intubation, mechanical ventilation, empyema, pneumothorax, pericardial tamponade, and perinatal death. Your influenza could also cause pneumonia. That's why vaccination is very much important. This is caused by your RNA viruses and it's aerosol droplets. So this would be ciliated columnar epithelium alveolar cells lined with mucous gland cells and macrophages. So complication would be pneumonia, pneumonitis, most severe form. We check for swab cultures so that we may confirm serologically. And choice of treatment would be amantadine despite it being a category C drug and should be administered within 48 hours of symptoms. Although influenza vaccine is not routine, it's highly recommended, no evidence of teratogenicity, and recommended for the immunocompromised population. You also have your varicella pneumonia caused by your varicella zoster virus. And this is if you have your chicken pox exposure. So constitutional symptoms would be your fever, maculopapular, vesicular rash, same in chicken pox, pachypnea, cough, and dyspnea. So complication would be skin infection of your caused by your strep and staph and varicella pneumonia. This is marked by chest pain that's pleuritic. Chest x-ray would show nodular infiltrates and interstitial pneumonitis. Treatment of choice would be a cyclovir, 5 to 15 milligrams per kilogram IV every 8 hours. And consider uh, varicella Ig for exposed pregnant women, and it's only given to the immunocompromised population. Another usual disease would be asthma. Of course, our precipitating factors would be the usual allergens, exercise, respiratory infection, um, some OB drugs could cause asthma. So characteristics would be your bronchial smooth muscle contraction, mucus hypersecretion, and mucosal edema. So your primary mediators could be your, would be your histamines, and your secondary mediators would be your prostaglandins, troboxin, and leukotriene. So there would be fetal maternal complications. Preterm labor, low birth weight, abortion, neonatal hypoxia. And for maternal, the mother could experience status asthmaticus, pneumothorax, corpulmonale, cardiac arrhythmia, and muscle fatigue due to respiratory arrest. So we have to check for our maternal pulmonary function tests and birth weight.
wait okay so what happens would be your maternal would be decreased uterine blood flow and decreased maternal venous return so there would be an alkaline leftward shift or your of your oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve and your fetal would have decreased umbilical blood flow increased systemic and pulmonary vascular resistance and decreased cardiac So, your clinical course could be wheezing, bronchoconstriction, chest tightness, eventually respiratory failure, severe hypoxemia, and death if it's not controlled. So, this is the ABG picture of your bronchial asthma. And this is how we classify your asthma severity. So, we predict that severity if we see that the patient is, has labored breathing, is experiencing tachycardia, has pulses paradoxus, and prolonged expiration, and the use of accessory respiratory muscles. Of course, if you have your central cyanosis and altered sensorium, these are already signs of a potentially fatal attack. Objectively, you have your ABG analysis and your pulmonary function tests. So an FEV1 of less than 1 liter or less than 20% of that predicted is a severe disease, which would equate to hypoxia, poor response to therapy, and high relapse rate. So acute asthma would warrant hospitalization, and we need to hydrate, give IV fluids to help clear pulmonary secretions, and supplemental oxygen by mask. First line of therapy would be our beta adrenergic agonist. So this would be your epinephrine, isoproterenol, terbutalin, albuterol, etc. And function of which would be to bind to specific cell surface receptors and activate adenyl cyclase, which increases intracellular cyclic AMP to modulate bronchial smooth muscle relaxation. This is frequently combined with a corticosteroid Onset of action would be several hours, whether IV or aerosol, and should be given along with your beta agonist. Chronic asthma, choice of pharmacologic therapy would be your theophylline, aminophylline, chromaline, and immunotherapy. Status asthmaticus is severe asthma of any type not responding after 30-60 minutes of intensive therapy. And, of course, you have to intubate and, and um, attach to a mechanical ventilator if there is retention, hypoxemia, and respiratory fatigue. So, for labor and delivery, so steroids give stress dose, selection of analgesic for labor, Fentanyl is um, ideal because non-histamine releasing, preferred than your morphine or your meperidine. Regional anesthesia over general anesthesia as an anesthetic and you do assisted vaginal delivery as much as possible. You anticipate for your postpartum hemorrhage as well. So for tuberculosis, of course, in an endemic country for TB, as like the Philippines and India, you have to know this as well, especially in pregnancy. So characteristics of which would be a granulomatous pulmonary reaction, clinical manifestations of which would be a cough, minimal sputum production with low-grade fever, hemoptysis, and weight loss. 
of course, your chest x-ray would show cavitation, limp adenopathy, and infiltrative patterns. Of course, your AFP would show sputum stain smears. So for non-pregnant tuberculin positive, no active disease, you give your INH daily for a year. Pregnant asymptomatic, we start after delivery and withhold till after 12 weeks. Remember, it's a category C drug. Non-pregnant with active disease, isoniazid, rifampicin, perazinamide. If pregnant, isoniazid, pyridoxin, rifampin, and etambutol. We do not give streptomycin to our pregnant patients. And this is the difference in regimen for the pregnant and non-pregnant. Okay? Category X in pregnancy. So this could cause auditory vestibular abnormalities and severe deafness. Sarcoidosis is another disease entity that you should know in pregnancy. So cause would be a chronic multisystem disease of unknown etiology. So, characteristics of which would be accumulation of T lymphocytes and phagocytes within non cachetting granulomas leading to a pulmonary reaction. This would manifest with dyspnea and cry cough. So, on chest x ray, interstitial pneumonitis could be seen, and prognosis is good and is treated by prednisone 1 mg per kilogram once a day for four to six weeks. Another entity would be your cystic fibrosis. So this is a serious genetic disorder caused by your Pseudomonas originosa, staph, or hemophilus influenzae. So characteristics of your cystic fibrosis would be your exocrine gland dysfunction with production of thick viscid secretions bronchial gland hypertrophy with mucus plugging and airway obstruction, manifestations of which would be chronic bronchitis and bronchiectasis, and check for high sodium, potassium, and chloride. Pregnancy sticks courage in cystic fibrosis and counseling is advised. Pancreatic insufficiency is needed. Corponan anticipate corpulmonary. So, you give your bronchodilators, oxygen and diuretics, and do chest physiotherapy and nutritional support. Okay. Sometimes, carbon monoxide poisoning could occur. So, this would be an odorless, tasteless gas with high affinity and binds to a hemoglobin. So, this occurs in inadequately ventilated areas worn by heaters using natural fuels. So, cure is hyperbaric oxygen. Okay. So, for sarcoidosis treatment, same for pregnant and non-pregnant, good prognosis. Be more wary for any pregnant women suspected of having pneumonia. Be more wary of pregnant patient having asthma during pregnancy. So, limit care, there are different regimens of tuberculosis, uh, different for the pregnant women. And of course, avoid carbon monoxide poisoning. So, thank you for listening to this uh, obstetrics and gynecology lecture. Please do subscribe to my channel for more lectures on obstetrics and gynecology. Thank you.